I would, I would request the chairpersons to please come on. Dr. Sandeep Agarwal, Dr. Sumit Talwar, Dr. Ramesh Agarwal, Dr. Mohit Bhandari. I would request the chairpersons to kindly join us on the stage. Seems we are ahead of time, yes. so the chairpersons are not here yet. Hi, surprise. <laughs> so, what do you say? We, do we start or do we wait? Uh, we can definitely wait for five minutes, sir. Not an issue. If we can call them. Uh, yes, we, are, we, we, we will try. So, five talks in this uh, session. Uh, one on gastric bypass, leave gastric me, complications of bariatric surgery, redo bariatric and other bariatric procedures. The speakers will be uh, Dr. VK Bhartia for uh, ruin by gastric bypass, Dr. Sarfraz Beg for sleeve gastric me, uh, Dr. Tamanas Chaudhary for complications of uh, bariatric surgery, Dr. Mahindra Narwarya for uh, we do bariatric surgery, the big boss, and Praveen for other bariatric procedures. Hips and tricks of laparoscopic ruin by gastric bypass. Hello. From the outset, I must say that this was, uh, this session was to be presented by Shashank Shah, but he could not come, and I was drafted in to do this. But Shashank has been my mentor. When I started bariatric surgery, he used to come and teach me how to do this in 2005. Shashan Shah and um, Mufi, these were the two mentors. So, can you hear? Okay. So this patient is a 50-year-old female with a low BMI, 38.5 and her only reason to do the RYGB was because of her uncontrolled diabetes. And you can see she was taking almost 200 units of insulin before the surgery. Technique is very standard, anticholic. Biliopancreatic limb is 50 centimeter. Elementary limb is 125 centimeter and small gastric pouch and gastrogenostomy is performed by the linear stapler. And this is the schematic diagram. That's the biliopancreatic limb there. I use a five or six port technique and in the next uh, slide I will show you the ports. Patient is positioned supine, head up, leg is split, cameraman in between the legs, I work on the right side and the assistant is on the left side. This is the my ports. There is an, one extra port here which I use for my RYGB because I find this helps me in suturing the gastrogenostomy, sorry, jejunogenostomy. We'll come to the video, please. Can you start the video? So the head, head end is, now this is the ligament of tries and from there you measure 50 centimeter. Use your harmonic scalpel to divide the mesentery and use a white cartridge 60 
to divide the je jejunum. I use a marker. I put a clip on the elementary limb and I use a methylene blue on the biliopancreatic limb. And you will notice that I use a diathermy to make a hole in the intestine. This gives me a very clear cut hole. You can do this with the harmonic scalpel as well, there is no problem. But mine is a ceramic coated hook and it gives me a very nice hole without a ragged margin. Jejunogenosmi is done with a 60 white cartridge. When you are removing the cartridge, do not open it. Just keep it a little closed. Otherwise your hole will become very big and you will spend more time closing that hole. This is 2.0 PDS. You can have a Vicryl, whichever is your preference. You can have an interrupted, you can have a continuous. It hardly really matters. You can also use a stapler to close this. But most of the people, I think they prefer stitching. Now here you will notice that I will not close the mesentic defect now. This I used to do initially because Sometimes it becomes difficult to take the bilio, uh, elementary lip towards the stomach. Now the upper, part, upper compartment, the first step in my upper compartment is to, to dissect it, is this area at the left crura. And I dissect it quite a lot until I get uh, the white epineurotic fiber of the crura exposed. This helps me when I am firing the staplers. Now position is either between first and second or at the second vessels going to the stomach. This point can be sometimes be quite bloody if there are adhesions behind the stomach. but a little bit of patience is required here. You can see still we are not able to enter the lesser sac. Just a little bit of plutonium and you are into the lesser sac. Now the first cartridge is again uh, 60 purple cartridge from Covidian or a similar one from Ethicon, doesn't really matter. Now my earlier dissection gives me a road map where I have to go. And all the time we put a bougie to measure it and make sure that we are not making it too narrow.
I leave a lit little bit of fundus there deliberately. That there. This is we used to do in the sleeve as well. You check for your bleeding now and see that you have divided it completely. Now the gastrogenostomy is done. Now this hole in the stomach you can make anywhere, you can make it posteriorly, you can make it on the suture line, you can make it anteriorly. Most of the people make it posteriorly. A 60 blue cartridge is used here, which should be actually not totally 60, it's, it's about 45. Again, the 2.0 PDS is being used because it's easier to handle that. So it's a linear stapler and a hand sutured anastomosis. When we started initially in 2005, we used to use a circular stapler and we did quite a lot of those during that time. Now after I have done this, I come back to my mesentic defect and close it. This I don't do it now, I am doing it initially. But it, before, I used to have difficulty getting the elementary limb in the very fat patients towards your, towards your gastric pouch. And if you, do, if you try and close it, it may kink your uh, jejun, uh, jejunum and cause an obstruction. I mean, here I am using a PDS. The people may say that you should use a non-absorbable material like proline or a silk. But remember, this is a very low BMI patient. And the reason we are doing here is a diabetes. So she is not expected to lose a lot of weight. So this is one of the tricks where the early learner should apply is not to close the mesentic defect before you have done your gastrogenostomy. Then we do a methylene blue leak test, which I nowadays do with endoscopy. Now you put a flat drain, this is a JP drain, and that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Bhartia, for an excellent uh, tips and tricks session. If there are any questions from the house. That's a good presentation, Dr. Bhartia. Only question is that 
your anastomosis, your son is more than 40, uh, 45 millimeters, that GJ. But I think the literature suggests it should not be more than 2.5 because we need to have a restrictive component there itself so that the proximal stomach can act and it may be indirect. Agreed. Totally agreed. Yeah. Any other questions? Just one comment from my side. This is one technique where you do the JJ first and the GJ later. There is another technique in which you do the GJ first and the JJ later. That is also uh, another variation of the same uh, I, thing. I think it is always better to do JJ first so that when you have problem in taking the ruling up, you can modify your uh, uh, stomach pouch and uh, do with it. Otherwise, if you already made a pouch and, uh, and there are there are there are fighters, boxers know, on both sides. I am <laughs> just mentioning for the sake of uh, completion that there is another technique which uh, needs to be kept in mind that yeah, the, the loop there is one more. The loop technique, they yeah. take the loop first. So it helps in, when you are doing a totally robotic uh, ruin by it helps because then you are shifting the whole surgery into just one quadrant which is much more easy for the robot rather than uh, in laparoscopy where we can operate in all four quadrants without any problem. Uh, it's just, just a variation of the same. Uh, it's a personal preference. I, I don't just a variation of the same. Uh, it's nothing much in that.